Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to try to fix a problem that we have on this new TRX4 that we got. Uh, it's not really a problem, it's just running into some issues with the servo arm causing the body to raise up. I got an inexpensive fix that'll help it. I'm going to show you what I did. You guys might be able to do it on your truck. And by the way, I just wanted to thank everybody because we hit a thousand subscribers this weekend. You're like, oh, big deal, you got a thousand subscribers. It is a big deal to me, guys. I don't beg for your subscription. I don't, hey, click the notification bell, click subscribe. I don't do all that. If you guys like the content and you like what I do, you're going to subscribe on your own. I'm not going to beg for you to subscribe. I hate that from channels that I watch. I usually put a thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing at the end of my videos. But I don't harp on you guys, right? If you want to, you'll subscribe. And I really appreciate everybody that clicks that button. Uh, if you don't think it's a big deal, start a YouTube channel. Try to get one subscriber. It's a big deal to me, guys. A thousand people, that's a lot. Does that mean, oh, we hit a thousand bucks, we're going to start making money? I doubt it. I know a couple other people, you don't make a bunch of money right off the bat, guys. You're, you've got to have 5,000, 10,000 subs to even make any decent money at all. But I do appreciate the support. I do love the comments. I try to answer every comment that we get. And anything you guys want to see, put in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Because as you notice, even though we have a thousand subscribers now, there's not a thousand views on my videos. Now there are some on the Endora Crawler and things like that. Over time, I got 14,000, 17,000 views. And that is amazing to me. But even with a thousand subs, Every time I put a video out, I'm not going to get a thousand views. But I do appreciate every view that I get. I do appreciate every comment that I get. Enough talking, guys. Let me show you what I did. Thanks for watching. Alright, guys. Here's the problem I'm having. Um, when I turn to the right, it's okay. It has a little bit of bump steer in there. But when I turn to the left, that's when you can see the whole front end of the truck picking up. And what it is, is the steering arm on the servo is hitting the panhard bar, or at least the mount, and it's causing the whole thing to raise the front of the truck up. So let me get the body off and show you what's doing that. Alright, so what we got, I believe I showed it in the last video, but I'll go ahead and show it again. I can get a decent shot in there. Maybe we'll try it upside down. That's what she said. <laughs> is the steering arm here is actually hitting the panhard bar. And you can see how this blue anodized is rubbed off and you can see the silver down in there a little bit. So when it uh, turns this way, it's fine because it's got clearance. But when I go back the other way, see how it's picking that whole axle up? See how it's hitting the pan hard bar? It's actually moving this whole mount right here back and forth and hitting the bar. So we're going to take this servo out and see if we can fix that problem today. This box is broken, so I'm just going to go ahead and take everything out of this box and relocate it because we need to get to the servo anyway. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take this bumper off the front for the time being. Alright, what else? Well, let's just go ahead and take the servo out. gonna come out of there with the arm on looks like it okay get my other screw out of there all right not sure how this is attached or if it's just glued looks like some glue in there let's 
try the old flat blade. There we go. Alright, so that's out of the way. Clean up that glue later. Alright, so here you can see better the servo. You see how this whole side, the blue is worn off just where when it turned it was rubbing this side. It's actually even worn down in there from where it was hitting the pan hard bar. Now, I know that they make an aftermarket mount that stiffens this up. I believe it adds a crossbar somewhere. Um, I've seen where you can replace it and it stiffens this pan hard bar mount up. So that may be something in the future, but I was just trying to get away from it actually hitting the servo. So what I was thinking, I may have to cut this little piece off back here, but I wanted to mount the servo in the lay down position. That way our arm was going this way and then we can just make another link. See if our if it's in front of our pan hard bar, there's no way for it to hit. So, and that should give us a lot more steering angle because the steering angle on this thing was kind of horrible. Uh, it was limited travel, and that is way more steering angle than I had. So, hopefully, we'll fix more than one issue with this. All right, I think I'm gonna take this front off so we can get in there and see a little better. And then I'll show you what we're going to do. Alright, let's see. Let's give this guy a turn. So it's going to need to go more that way. Let's see if our servo is this way. All right, that should be plastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and slice or dice that guy off of there. All right, so all I did was just cut that little stand off. And now, if we slide this guy between these body posts which we're probably not going to use anyway let's see if this how far all right it won't turn that way let's flip this over maybe Must have had some Loctite on that guy. Whew, almost had to phone a friend. All right, so we got that off of there. I'm just going to flip it over the other direction. Let's see. From there to there. So let's go all the way one way. Come on. Uh, let's see. It's about there. Just kind of trying to center this so it's equal both directions. So that's a little past 90 degrees that way. Just a little past there. We're going to be right in this area, so that sh should be pretty much centered in the servo. Alright, so what I'm thinking is if we mount it this way, we may have to mount this on the back side of the servo arm. Let's see how far this arm travels steering wise. So this goes all the way over and doesn't hit our frame that direction, so that's good. 
all the way back this way is just past center on the chassis so I think we're good there I can go all the way lock to lock without hitting the chassis so that should mean if this is mounted in there and this is all the way over I should be able to get most of my steering angle just by mounting this on the back side of the servo arm so easy fix what I did was went on Amazon of course and I ordered these aluminum servo stanchions so these are for like if you have a axle on servo axle on servo no idiot servo on axle these would be the pieces that mount to the carbon fiber piece that attaches to the top of the pumpkin but these are just the little L brackets that have the servo holes so what I'm gonna do is just screw these to the front hole on the servo plate and then just mount it vertically or laying down actually they would call it this way and then we're not gonna have any bump steer because this isn't gonna hit anymore so let me get that put on real quick and then we'll test it out and see how it does all right guys so all I did was mount the little L brackets this way and I just used the original servo screws that have the little shoulder on them so that holds the servo in nice and I left them a little bit loose so that I can line this hole up and put the screw through and what I'm gonna do is put the screw from the bottom up because these are uh, threaded and these are aluminum so I'm gonna go up through the plastic into this now the only downfall I see is there's only one screw here and there but honestly with this going in there you're not gonna be using that much torque I'm sure that you could find a different brand that maybe has a second hole if you wanted it but um, I think one will be enough to hold it so yeah I'm just gonna lay this in there put the one screw up from the bottom once I get these two tight then I'll go ahead and tighten these four in place have it mounted in there like that and then I'm going to take my screw and go through the back side of the like that and go into the back side of the servo so that the steering is actually behind on this side so let me get that in real quick and I'll show you the finished product all right guys real quick just want to show you a problem I was running into I could get to the screw on the bottom on this side but the side the pumpkins on I couldn't get through straight anywhere so what I did was I disconnected the one end of the panahard bar just enough to make you know that lets the rear end go back and forth and then I can get my screw down in there or my screwdriver down in there and be able to get that screw in straight so just a little trick to take the pan hard bar off might give you enough room to get down in there without having to take everything apart all right so I got it all in there um, one thing I did uh, initially put the L brackets in the forward hole I had to move it to the to the back hole to get the servo to sit back further which basically gets the servo flush with the actual original servo mount and I had to extend the servo arm just to get it more parallel because it was coming up at way too much of an angle so what I did was measured from eye to eye when this was fully compressed you can see that hits just barely hits the uh, tie rod bar at full compression and that's where I got my length from so from right now from eye to eye is about 31 32 millimeters this was just a temporary fix what I did was take one of these aluminum bumper pieces put the two holes there put two screws in there and then I just still had some adjustment to figure out where I wanted it with the other holes and was able to come up with the 31 32 millimeters and I get full compression and it just barely rubs that drag link there so so that's how I came up with that number I'm gonna go ahead and order a servo arm from Amazon I'll put the link to that in the description as well as the L brackets that I got I know Amazon sells them that are longer um, I think you can get a pack of three of them for like eleven dollars and these L brackets were like seven or eight bucks so overall uh, 
cheap way to do a laydown servo. I know there's companies out there that make the laydown bracket that bolts in there, but they're like $20, $25 plus shipping. These brackets were seven bucks. And then another servo arm is another, you know, if you get three of them for 12 bucks or you order just one of them for $8, well then you're only 14 bucks in. Or if you're, you know, just like fiddling with stuff and you wanna just make one out of something you got laying around, um, you know, I've, I've got some pieces of aluminum that I could use, but this had holes in it so I could decide which height that I wanted to go with and see which, uh, which hole would work out best. Check this out over here. You guys like my steering nut? It's actually a, uh, a ball end, and what I do is I use this temporarily when I'm having this off and on. So I can just unscrew this by hand. That way I don't have to get the tool out every time. I just use a ball end, and now I'll go back and, and actually put a nut on it. But I use ball ends sometimes just as like a quick wing nut. Write that down, write that down! So, there's another little trick, guys. But anyway, that's uh, going to help our steering problem. Now, I still have to go in there and adjust end play and all that, but I got a lot more steering angle than I used to have. As far as this front piece here, you can put this back in. You're just going to have to notch this where the, ser where the servo arm is. You might even just be able to cut out this little, this little notch right here. Just cut through there and through there. Might be enough, because the only thing that's really in the way is, is this top part of the servo horn. So, but we'll worry about that later. And I don't think it's going to cause any problems with our front bumper. That goes right back in place, so no problems there. So not saying you have to do this guys, but that is a uh, quick and easy way to do it, inexpensive. There are other companies out there that make products to do this, but they're more expensive. If you have time and love the hobby, just do it yourself, figure it out. That's part of the fun. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. On the next episode, we're probably going to try to mount this Jeep body on here and uh, try to get that to fit. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you next time.